I think what makes Los Angeles such a magnet for the media market is that it is a constant cycle of destruction. When you have a metropolis that has 10 million people, you are bound to always have something going on. You have gangs, prostitutes, transients, some of the richest people in the world, hardworking individuals, and you have everything in your face at all times. Every day it's a constant struggle between the good, the bad, the ugly, and that's why my job I feel is so important. It's my job that's telling the stories about what's going on in these communities. Every situation that we go to where somebody loses their life, it is a tragedy and that sticks with you forever. I can tell you stories about every single fatality I've ever been to. I'll never forget them. But for us, it's really about separating ourselves from what's happening. There's a lot of people that can be affected by one story and these stories have to be told. Responded to the scene, we located one vehicle fully engulfed and another vehicle overturned. Um, Preliminarily, it looks like we have two parties that were deceased on scene. One is going to be a male. Uh, the other one, we're not entirely sure at the moment. We're still investigating. Uh, one vehicle was traveling wrong way. At this time, we're not sure exactly which one was traveling wrong way. It's still part of the investigation right now. Have I see it as a great opportunity, one which is severely humbling to me that I am fortunate enough to be able to be in the position to tell these people's stories. Roger. 
I couldn't even get a footage from a double fatal uh, wrong way head on collision on northbound 110 freeway in Harbor Gateway. Uh, with the vehicles fully involved in flames as well as sound from CHP. Thanks so much, take care. Bye. I actually always say a prayer every time I am at such a tragic story. I know that the families are going to be completely devastated once they find out that their loved ones have passed away. And despite the circumstances, the loss of a human life is always a tragedy. And for us, it's just another story, but for somebody else, it's their whole life has been turned upside down. Hey, it's Jake with ANG. Just wanted to let you know I sent in some overnight footage of the sheriff's activity at the St. Francis Hospital. Okay, thanks so much. Take care. So a lot of this job is sitting and waiting. It's hurry up and wait. And, you know, luckily for us, we have strategic places around Los Angeles that we, we kind of stage at and wait for the action to happen. And usually our staging areas are centrally located in areas of you know, high crime volume. You never know when a call is going to come to you.
If my audience has an opportunity to see truly authentic police work in its raw, natural environment, how could I pass that opportunity up? At the end of this scene, it was so surreal. You have the downtown LA skyline, you have the palm trees, the taco truck, suspect on the ground, officer on top of him, helicopter overhead, that is Los Angeles at night in a nutshell. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right. Take Thank care. You. I like to think that A&G has a good reputation with these officers. I never want to have to get involved in a situation. It's not something I go out every night hoping to do. For us, it was a very unique opportunity to highlight typical police work, work that is not broadcast. But I know that my audience loves this stuff. Hey, good morning, it's Jake with AMG. Hey there, just wanted to let you know I sent in some footage of an RV fire, pretty dramatic, in downtown LA. Yeah, the one over by USC. Yep, thanks so much, take care.
uh, Metro from uh, Agent 13. Go ahead and give me a heavy rescue three as well in the distance to the assignment. Roger, heading heavy rescue three. So far, one patient, one vehicle, one patient trapped. Uh, we're gonna have to keep. Sleep. I was sleeping and I heard a loud like skirk, like a loud scream, like a loud crunch, like it was it was the worst sound like I ever heard. It was horrible and it's very and it's very sad. The metro the giant letter. Companies on scene are picking up. We're leaving the scene with LAPD who is currently on scene. There's a lot of people that like to just stage and wait for a call, but for me it's different. I like to be out there. I like to get in tune with the streets. I like to drive around. It gives you a chance to actually learn the area that you're working. You get to meet people, and you just never know what's gonna happen out in front of you. Any of us in the United States are pressing a back of Asian supervisor, Vermont and Olympic at the Bank of America for after ball TV. 2871, let me get in. 245 has two occupants in the vehicle. 2050, the suspect is complying. He's going to the Bank of America. 53, do you need an RA? Roger, ma'am. Let me have an RA in my location. 2050. Uh, male, approximately 25 years of age, conscious of breathing, suffering from pain to the next, due to the safety. I'm going to do it right there, sir. Sir, I'm going to do it over there. Okay? You can talk to my supervisor after. Every now and again, you'll encounter an officer who doesn't like the press because they think that we're all the same. We're all out there to make them look bad. And unfortunately, we don't really have the opportunity to explain to them, hey, this is what we're about. We're not here to make you look bad. You have to kind of weigh, is it worth arguing with them over to get access or is it not? And in this particular situation, you know, the officer wasn't seriously injured. There wasn't any major injuries to any other party. The suspect was already in custody. It really wasn't that major of an issue. We were able to get the story on television, but you know, every now and again, you do have access issues with stories that, you know, certain people don't want on television. Traffic accident 
players. Oh no, up there. It's oh, this is we foggy up there too. You got some really good players then. Oh, see. oh yeah, that's that's all. <laughs> Not everything that we shoot ends up on the news. Just because it's not newsworthy in the sense that the networks don't want to broadcast it, doesn't mean that the story inherently is not newsworthy to the general public. And I think that's what is great about having a social media outlet like I have, because a lot of people come to my page because of the fact that they know they're going to get stuff that they're not going to see anywhere else. And I think people kind of crave that. She what you did, my Mother in law passed away, bitch. This is this. I gotta get out. Oh, we're supposed to have a backup area unit supervisor, agent, remand for 415 group. I'm a journalist, and, and I understand that I have a, a job to do, but at the same time, I'm also a content creator. People come to our page because they know that what they're gonna get is exciting, it's compact, it's quick, and it really does have a sense of truth to it. Good night, sir. Any hey, you. Don't fight a burger. Are you coming I've been at this for over five years now, and I know what people want to see. They want to see unfiltered, unscripted, and unbiased news. And I feel very fortunate that you know I was able to build my audience on that exact premise. Sure.
there's a lot of people that live in Metro LA that do have typical nine to five jobs and they don't see the, the nightlife. Los Angeles at nighttime is a completely different story than what people are used to. Live point 27 to the fire hydrant at the brand Hollywood Boulevard. Sheared hydrants happen quite often. You'd be surprised at how often we come across a, a sheared fire hydrant. They're magnets for drunk drivers. But I also see it as an opportunity to paint a picture. My camera is like a paintbrush, and the scene is my canvas. And we, as the individual photographer, paint the picture. That, to me, I think, is a very honorable job. Red Cell from Life Force 27, Sheared Hydrant, North East Corner, La Brea, and Hollywood Boulevard. We shut down one valve. Notify DWP. Sniper 27, Roger. When it all comes down to it, this job is really helping me find who I am as a person. And it drives me to want to keep going. There's someone in the cool. He's in the cooler. I Oh shit! Hey, sit down! Sit down! Come on! Sit down! Come on, man! Just come down, and talk to us. Come on, brother! I told you about it. Just come down, talk to us. Top of the freezer, you can come down. Both of you on top of the freezer, you can come down. Come on, man! He's coming down. Officer needs help, 16940 Devonshire. Officer needs help, 16940 Devonshire. Shots fired. Any unit come in, one officer possibly shot. Two shots, and officers five times. In the back warehouse. I'm not sure if there's any exits. Suspect into the back of the warehouse. Five shots. So instead of reporting that there's four emergency exits. You let me get an RA for a male, conscious of breathing, suffering from a gunshot wound. He's gonna be 40. Okay, parking 20 additional units. Right. Let's get the air. I'm going to need officers to the south end of the route. So enter off of Balboa on the south apron and hold the rear. There's a bunch of bays where these trucks are. We lost sight of him when he ran through the back. He ran out the back of the route to the Arco. Suffolk was asking him running into the Arco. 35, inside of the Arco. Let me start getting a perimeter set on the Arco. I have a uh, male, Hispanic, no shirt, black, short. 1972, code 6. 1996, I'm code 6. 1712, I'm going to be code 6. 1612, code 6. Yeah, one, I'm code 6. Roger, 220, the airship, uh, we need to uh, think big on this perimeter. we got an officer uh, that's wounded down here. We got an officer over here. They just one officer, small caliber to the R. He's in uh, Red 87 right here next to us. R87 is going to transport uh, the injured officer to Northridge. I'm not with him. No. I'm a credential to put yeah, in place. Yeah, we saw okay. Yeah, I saw Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. You have a suspect barricaded at the Arco station. 19 C4, I had eyes on a suspect, handgun in his right hand. Uh, he's on his cell phone to his left ear. You're 
people with you are going to be our designated shooters. Everybody else needs to stand by. To watch their muzzle direction and fire discipline. If this guy comes out, we got him. Airship, be advised, this is a 187 on a police officer. Right now, we're talking to the suspect, trying to get him to come out. Everybody stay behind cover. Suspect is coming out to the north door and hold here. And then, Harvey, you direction. Have that unit continue to uh, verbalize on the PA system. So I think they dropped the firearm, dropped everything, picked his hands up. So it looks like we're starting to get some uh, compliance. You got it. You're going to give him direction, okay? Okay, one. One. We got direction out here now. Yeah. Airship, give us a little bit of altitude. Also, 60, use your PA, we can't hear shit down here. Hold up, everybody hold up, only one unit giving them direction, that's gonna be us over here on the north side. Everybody hold your positions, we got a unit that's gonna give them direction right now. Everybody, hold up. Towards them right now, everybody do not give them direction. All oh, units maintain your integrity. I'm not assisted. 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 i no Unit with the suspect. Debrief them, see if there's anybody else inside. Swat's gonna go ahead and clear the building. Unit, stand down. Hey there, good evening, it's Jake with ANG. Good, I just wanted to let you know I sent in footage of the shooting investigation in Devonshire. Awesome, thanks so much. All of the dramatic elements were present in this story. You had an officer shot, you had an armed gunman on the loose, you had a grocery store being evacuated right around the holidays. Could it get any crazier? Approximately uh, 6.30 this evening, Los Angeles Police Department uh, received a call of a man creating a disturbance inside of the Ralphs located at Devonshire and Balboa. Uh, the responding officers had uh, updated information that informed them that there was a uh, possibility that the suspect was armed with a weapon. Uh, the officers arrived here at the location and were directed to the location of the suspect. Uh, they did determine that he was uh, armed there was a confrontation with the officers and an officer involved shooting occurred. Uh, at the time the officer involved shooting occurred, one of our Los Angeles police officers was struck by the gunfire and he has been transported to Northridge Hospital where he's receiving medical care. Uh, at this point, his injuries do not appear to be life-threatening. We're blessed that uh, he is going to uh, survive this incident and the injuries were not life-threatening. At one point, police say officers and the man fired their weapons. An officer was shot during the gunfight. At this point, investigators believe that the officer was shot by the suspect in the arm. Investigators say the suspect then ran across the street to an AMPM store where he later surrendered. A store employee at the Ralphs describes the moments that the suspect entered the grocery store. Well, when we, when the guy first came in, it, it looked like he was on something. Maybe he was definitely smelled like alcohol. And then he pulled a gun on anyone who would talk to him. And so my manager came out, called police, and he went to the roof and then he fell through the roof. Yeah, and that's when the cops came and 
shot him with a bean bag, and then he pulled his gun and shot a cop. The man was taken into custody at the AMPM and transported to a local hospital for evaluation. That's Liz from Granada Hills. I'm Darsha Phillips. We'll send it back to you guys.